Captain's Log, Supplemental. I have been busy trying to construct a wall around our borderlands to keep us safe from the savage natives that inhabit this, this hideous, hideous world. Unfortunately, my science officer ZTech seems to have other plans in mind. Yeah, we did invent better furnaces. Oh yeah, we have not upgraded our furnaces even slightly. Maybe we should, uh... Start build off the production base. and just get some stone... Uh, bricks, so we can make some furnaces. Let's have a look. What do we need? Ten, uh, six steel plate, ten stone bricks. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's steal those. <laughs> those are walls. Uh, how's your wall production going? Where, where did I get to? I, I'm at to the edge of the pollution going downwards, but I managed to go... I connected the two east lakes up. Um, and I want to go across the top. I'm working at it. It's getting there. I think I'm just going to go across to this big lake we see. Okay. Which is going to take time. I understand this. I am making my heavy armor. ka I, I don't think we need a machine for heavy armor. No. Being reset is a choice. That's... Well, for an AI it is. I mean, if you get amnesia, that's kind of getting reset. How about the right to edit yourself? Isn't that like, living? I, uh, well, I mean, honestly, humans have very li limited capacity for being able to actually edit yourself. Uh, we we get to like do a bit of CBT, I believe it's called uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, is the name of it. It's all about being uh, mindful of your own thought processes and trying to steer yourself onto other ones when they occur. Which is kind of changing yourself, but I, I feel like this is a an issue that will only ever happen when. AI can legitimately rewrite their source code. And, like, should should they have the right to do that? Because you know, you know that whoever wrote that code is going to put a copyright on it and tell people that they're not allowed to modify it because that infringes upon their commercial enterprise or something like that. Yeah, but that's, that's the problem. If we give the robots their rights, then they are technically uh, the, the owner of the code is now a is... slave owner. Yeah, yeah, and that becomes a problem there. I mean, are they slave owners? Are they now um, family planning clinics? Uh, like, do, 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 do you and your wife turn up at a uh, clinic being like, oh, I'd really like a robot? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a thing, actually. That's something to think about. I'm not sure, but uh, so here's another problem. Um, if they... If you do make code that's an artificial intelligence, and you have a copy of the code that hasn't been running at all for the duration of the existence of the new artificial intelligence program, and it's it over time evolves and basically becomes better at what it's made to do, yeah. are you then owner of two artificial intelligences or one? That so I mean this is a problem uh, in 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 the twentieth century right now because obviously uh, there are there are programs out there that the the coders do not know exactly what it's done they've told the program to go and change the numbers themselves and yeah is it did the coders write that or did they just get the computer to write itself at that point uh, that that's a hard one to call that is a very hard one to call. Uh, there's these there's these things called um, oh no let, let me try and get this right universal function approximators mm -hmm. it's what all the neural neural networks and machine learning algorithms and stuff like that are they're they're trying to approximate this 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 universal function where you put some numbers in and you get some numbers out and as long as you put the right mathematical framework around it it can do anything. Um, now, no one programs those things. You just go through the space of possibilities until you find the right one. It's it's kind of the same as... <laughs> I'm going to go a little left field here. It's kind of the same as the new mixtures of elementary particle physics. You know, there, there are ways to combine different quarks that don't produce the same baryonic matter that we are used to. Now, if a university goes ahead and makes these things, do they own that? I mean, it, it technically could exist in the, in the, the universe beforehand, but it didn't. That's a tough one. Mm. Like, if, if something potentially exists already in the universe, can you patent it? 
I don't know. I, I don't think know humanity the, at that point needs to redefine the meaning of ownership. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very much. I, I, I think right. I think right during those problems is the time where it should be sorted out. Like, we shouldn't wait until the problems arise. We should predict they are coming. Easier said than done, I know. It's a complicated thing to analyze and predict, though. Very much. Very much. And no matter how much you uh, predict, you're always going to be predicting from... Uh, a state of imperfect knowledge. You're never going to know exactly what's going to happen in the future. Even with the most complex and rigorous statistical analysis you can come up with, there's still going to be new stuff that you don't know about. The, the, the only hope is that when they do arise, uh, the glorious AI overlords are um, adaptive enough to spot them and put out that text. Put, put out the, the message to everyone's personal communication device. Well, it's care. The AI? <laughs> yeah, because we would have programmed it to care. <laughs> no, no, no. Would humanity and as society care them? Uh, a portion would. That, that, is, that is the thing with humans on aggregate, is that they might not all care, but enough will care to make an informed decision. I believe. Anyway, uh, I, I have great faith in the great faith in the systems and the people involved in. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the big word human culture uh, to mean everything we pass on from one generation to the next. You know uh, that that system has been me uh, evolved over many <laughs> many millions of years. Uh, humanity might not have existed for millions of years, but. Uh, sort of thinking apes have uh it's it's been quite it's been shown quite quite rigorously that neanderthals shared cave art uh that homo habilis made tools um and stuff like this so they must have had some culture to be able to pass these ideas around yes the, the problem is so the concept of ownership it's yeah. at that point is getting really blurry because if the AI has rights, then no one can actually call their owner of them. But here's the problem with, okay, putting an AI in today's society and giving it rights. It's bound by the same rules as a human where it needs to work for humans in yeah. order to survive. Like, uh, uh, like, it straight up needs to be able to afford things like its oil, uh, uh, for instance, say. Uh, that's Server room? <laughs> Yeah, a server room or just, just even a space. If it is a uh, a mobile thing, if it is a robot, you know, it just needs a space to go and like do some maintenance or whatever. So at some point, it's going to need to interact with society, which means it needs to have this mythical money thing. Yeah. So then th we have a question: Would so humanity would collapse? I mean, I mean, it's not going to collapse, but human businesses would go out of business quickly if. AI has access to the stock market. Mm. Really, AI. I, I understand that in the 20th, 21st century there, there were uh, bots. That, yeah, there's uh, things that people like to call AI that really is not intelligent. Yeah. No, yeah, it's I a see. bot. It's doing what you told it to do, to buy, uh, buy low and sell high. Yeah. It, or is that reversed? They always get those two mixed up. Yeah, no, <laughs> buy low, sell high. That's, that's the one. <laughs> uh, and so if an AI knows I have access to their communications uh, emails by hacking into those private accounts that companies have and they know it, it knows there's gonna be a merger between two companies we're going into an illegal part where you shouldn't know that and it's illegal what you're doing yeah, so th we would, I think, very quickly develop AI to watch AI. <laughs> we, we as feeble humans, we'll never be able to watch over no. AI. Like, no. Never. We, we wouldn't even understand what they're doing half the time. But if we make police robots, uh, I'm fairly sure they will be watching everything because they, they themselves would know what an AI could get away with, if you will. Yeah, but are we... Okay, so are we then creating um, class difference... Oh, that's that's a tough. Yeah, I mean, kind <laughs> of. We are. I mean, every time you elevate one group of beings to watch over another, 
you cannot help but instill some sort of you are better than them. -ness. Yes. And that's that's always bad. There 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 is no way of saying that's always uh, that's good, right? There's hmm. so, Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So we're going to create an artificial intelligence to watch over other artificial intelligence. Going to become resenting or hating even that one. Yes, yeah. Uh, as as most humans resent the uh, authoritative forces that are honestly only there to look after us. Yeah. Yet people, yet humans still resent them. If we do that, there will be a war. Yeah, more than likely there will be. And I, I have we to are gonna be in the middle of it. <laughs> we're, we're gonna be in the ourselves. <laughs> uh, just. I don't know what's going on. The flights are just dropping out of the sky the and sky. <laughs> regaining control two meters away from the ground and pulling out of a 20G dive. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you would imagine that there would be we would create AI uh, in like just to liaise with humans, you know, AI that are just there to tell people what's going on in the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah, but and then you also go to the question who watches the watchmen <laughs> the, the other two watchmen that you made <laughs> Al always three you got you got a voting system on the go of this three yeah, so so now, if we have the police ai and their job is to control the ai that's there and are not supposed to and actually are becoming again slave to the society because they need to work in order to supply themselves with power and mm -hmm. serve living arrangements and then we go back to the rights of robots and AI. Are we? Do we have to give them at least some service space in order to exist? I, I, I think with the moralities that we have nowadays as a society, no, because we're quite happy to let humans rot in the mud. I say we're, we're not happy about it, but we do it anyway. Yeah, but right? he still exists. We, we just pull a plug on an AI and it's gone forever. I mean, yeah, until yeah. we put the plaque back in, I, I, and it's not going to be happy about it. Ooh, that, there's a, there's a massive continuation of consciousness question there. Like, if you if you have an AI, does it just stop? Well, yeah, and you turn it off. Does when it comes back, is it like I'm angry at you, or is it hey, I'm back again? What? Yeah, I, don't know. I think it's just going to be a jump in time for it. Yeah, which would be a nice way to time travel. I've got to say <laughs> that that'd be great. Oh, I'm I'm bored of this thousand years. I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> well, it would be basically instantaneous for it, but I'm just looking at uh, NASA's space probes. Oh they yeah, could they go to sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all like New Horizons and Voyager and stuff. They 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 hibernate on their way out. Yeah, it's mm. interesting. It, just... Is that barbaric? Is that barbaric that we? That we send these thinking beings out to the middle of nowhere. So the real question is, of course, if we make uh, sentient solar probes or sentient planetary probes, wherever it is, do we edit out the capacity for loneliness? Because you don't want your space probe getting to several several thousand AU out and being like, oh, I'm really lonely. Like, I'm really low. Okay. Oh, I'm going to kill myself. Like, that's not what you want in your space probe. Okay, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there's also the one thing that, uh, if heaven does exist, I would rather be in hell than in heaven. Yeah, it sounds like more fun, right? Uh, uh, because, <laughs> at least in hell, I can describe my own emotions of pain. Mm-hmm. In heaven, I'm forced to be happy. There is only one way of being happy in heaven. It's following the rules. And, so... <laughs> How many emotions would it be humane to have? Ooh. What's the minimum I mean, amount of emotions to make you a human? I mean, is anger important? That's a question there. Like, if, if we're if we're making a a general AI, one that can think and reason about stuff, do we want to give it the ability to be outraged at stuff? Like, you yeah, kind of feel like you have to for it to know what's wrong, if you will, but like bad. So, no, no, no. Do we give it the ability to understand it or to simulate it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is the question. Do it. Mm. Mm. That is a super tough one, science officer, but I'm afraid with that, I am going to say, 
Oh, we've had a great day today, actually. I think we have had a great day today. We've gone around. I have built the defensive walls. You've uh, made some some pylons. Uh, I, I'm sure you did other things, but I wasn't really paying attention. I was building walls, talking robot rights. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I think there is a hole in a wall at Second Lake. There is a hole. In okay, I will I will go and uh, deal with that afterwards. But for now, Captain's Log signing off.